Hey, one. Hey, one. Hey, one. Yeah. Truly. Cooler and I'm flyer too. Damn. Damn. Cooler and I'm flyer too. Welcome to the show that's cooler and flyer too. A1 Forever Sports. I'm Chris Tip Moore here with the podcast version of 81 Forever Sports today. No on camera work, but definitely here to talk about yesterday's game between the Los Angeles Rams and the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, so a lot of things transpired in that game. First and foremost, what I would like to do is uh, get into some stats about yesterday's game. First and forehand, as you know, the Falcons uh, were down early and, you know, tried to come back late, but fell a little short. So um, yesterday, let's talk about. Um, actually, I'm going to start with the Rams. Uh, Matthew Stafford had went 27 for 36. 272 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Um, also on the ground, got a touchdown and four, 47 yards and 10 carries from Daryl Henderson, 15 carries from Cam Akers uh, for 44 yards. So between the two, they still didn't get over uh, 50 yards. I mean, they, excuse me, they, they didn't get over 50 yards individually and they did not get over a hundred yards collectively, but you did have Cooper cup who had 11 catches for 108 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, even though, uh, you know, I'll get into some more things about cup coming forward, but you know, you had that and you had Tyler Higby with like 71 yards, Allen Robinson, four catches for 53 yards and a touchdown who, Allen Robinson was nowhere to be found in game one, but they took advantage of it this year. Um, I believe A.J. Terrell, even though um, he's had struggles in the first two games, like he's still been, you know, solid overall. I know he's being attacked more because you have Casey Hayward on the other side. So he is being attacked a little bit more, but A.J. Terrell is still a great corner. You know, let's not get that mistaken one bit and um, think that AJ is not who we think he is. Let's just go ahead and just get that out of our head now because AJ is great. It's just, you know, they're putting bigger receivers on him and they're just making a good move. Everyone gets beat. Everyone gets beat. Okay. Just a mat. Just remember how we was taking out Jalen Ramsey. Uh, last week, Hostage Stefan Diggs owned him the whole game, the whole game, you know. So, you know, it just you, – you can't get too high – I mean, excuse me, you can't get too low on what's going on with A.J. Yes, in the last two games, it's he's been getting thrown at and he's given up three touchdowns in two games, you know. Uh, it's, it's tough. It's really tough, you know what I'm saying, when you – when you have, you know, a good corner on the other side in Casey Hayward, I know he's older. I don't think he's trash. I've heard people call him trash. He's not, you know what I'm saying? And um, and honestly, I'll, you know, argue anybody down with that, with points and everything to prove. But, uh, yeah, he's definitely not trash. But, you know, with him being on the other side, you know, AJ will see more attention and a whole lot faster. So let's get into – the game a little bit more. Let's get on to the Falcon side. Enough of talking about those Rams. Uh, the Falcons did give up a few sacks yesterday. Um, I believe Bobby Wagner got one. Justin Hollins got him one. And uh, DeCobe Durant. Um, not sure if he's really Kevin Durant's cousin or not, but um, I hear that that is Kevin Durant's cousin. So, um. He got in on on the fiasco, and also he also had a, a interception as well. Um, of course, Ramsey with the interception toward the end of the game, but we'll get to that in a moment. So the Falcon side, Marcus Mariota, seventeen for twenty six, one hundred and ninety six yards, two touchdowns, two picks. Okay, so now Mariota, 
Mariota's not playing like absolutely terrible. Like he's not playing like oh, okay. I have to get into what I want to say as far as like the words I want to use to describe Marcus Mariota. It's like he's not trash, but he's not treasure either, if that makes any sense, because he's out there turning the ball over regardless of how or why he's out there turning the ball over. But at the same time, he is making plays. I know he extended like three plays by himself on a couple of drives. And I'm shoot the one thing that impressed me was the fact that he fell down, got right back up and, you know, still completed the pass to uh, Parker Hess. And uh, that, that was very impressive. So it's just like he has ups and downs, but it, the thing, one thing about it is, you know what you're going to get with him. So there's no surprises. I haven't seen any surprises out of Marcus Mariota, I guess, outside of the falling down and being able to get right back up and still throw a strike for a first down. But outside of that, it's like, I know what I'm expecting from him, you know? And, um, you know, I said on the first drive, I know we had like two third downs converted. Drake London, Kyle Pitts both got a catch. You know, you have four plays of 10 yards or more all on the first drive, you know, but the Falcons did give up a sack. And Young Way Cool misses a field goal. First one he missed since November 18th, 2021. And you get no points. You know, that came back to haunt you a little bit. You know, I mean, I know you still technically kind of would have lost by one, I guess, but that still hurt, you know, missing that field goal and not being able to get any points on that first drive, despite being able to go right down into Rams territory with no problem. Um, also, like I said about Allen Robinson, he put his foot in the ground on AJ Terrell, was able to shake Terrell and get a little wide to have the, the touchdown. You had offensive line miscues from the Falcons including a bot snap. And luckily you was able to get that bot snap back on a PI on Jalen Ramsey to extend that drive. And then you have um, later on, you have a fourth and two Cordero Patterson gets stuffed, turn over on downs. I wasn't mad at that at all because how many times have we seen the Falcons? We all yelling at the TV, just run the ball, run the ball. And then they try some little option play or some swing play so just something that just shouldn't have been done. And it's just it's terrible that you didn't get the first down, but I still like the play call. Like Coach Arthur Smith, I feel like he's getting he's getting his play calls, you know, he's getting more comfortable with them. He's still a young coach, still a lot of work to do. But you know, Marcus Mariota is a stopgap. You know, I've heard it multiple times. And I believed it. I mean, when he, we signed him, we had to sign him because we didn't have another quarterback. As And um, I'm going to get into Desmond Ritter here in a second. But the reason why I have to get into him is because even though Marcus Mariota did connect with uh, Kendra Hodge on a 39-yard uh, play-action pass, and even though he did hook up with Drake London later on back when it was 28-3, to Rams and to kind of jumpstart the Falcons offense with a touchdown. Great pass, by the way, by Mariota being able to fit the needle in there and get it right to uh, your big, big body Drake. So I give Mariota his credit. One thing about it is I'm going to give anybody their credit when they do something. But when they mess up, I'm going to say, hey, look, you messed up. OK. Because, you know, accountability is everything. If I mess up. I expect someone to say, hey, man, you know, next time just know that this, this, that, and the third and come back better. You know, that's what it's all about. Being able to accept when you messed up and come back better. So speaking of messing up, Mariota did miss Kyle Pitts early in the end zone and Brandon Brian Edwards in the back of the end zone late. And, and then, like I said, that was uh, when Koo was able to hit the PAT to give us three points on the board before the touchdown came from Mariota to um, Drake London. And everything. So you had that going on. Um, 
real quick, I want to get into the rushing attack. The rushing attack was nothing like it was last week. I'm talking about absolutely nothing. The Rams came in and kind of, you know, stopped the run a little bit. They did. Honestly, between four backs, uh, the Falcons still did not eclipse over 100 yards rushing. So they got close, but they did not eclipse 100 yards. You had Cordero Patterson with 10 carries for 41 yards. You had Tyler Algiers, 10 ca- um, excuse me, 10 rushes for uh 30 yards. And I said 10 rushes for 41 yards for Cordero Patterson. Mariota had six carries for 16 yards. And you also have a Caleb Hundley sighting. He got one carry for three yards. And um, he was yanked after that one. So the Russian attack, they came in and kind of stopped your Russian attack a little bit. Uh, overall, though, you know, you had 90 rushing yards to the Rams, uh, 65, because I know one of their running backs had like a negative 26-yarder. 20, so uh, Brandon Powell, as a matter of fact, yeah, he had a negative 26-yarder. So that absolutely killed uh, the Rams running attack as far as yards goes uh, of course we did not have we lost the, the total yards battle period we lost the the yards per play battle as well uh we had uh, the falcons had 17 first downs to the los angeles rams 24 third down efficiency the falcons were three for 10 to the rams being six for 10 Fourth down, 0-1-1 for the Rams, 1-2 and for the Falcons. And uh, the Falcons allowed three sacks when the Rams only allowed one. So another game with sack, with a sack, um, back-to-back games with sacks now for the Falcons. So that is a good thing. They only punt it once, you know, which is also kind of a good thing. The only problem is, even though – we made the Rams lose a fumble and throw two picks. Because one thing about Stafford, you be patient. He'll throw a pick. I love the guy. Love Stafford. Like, you know, Georgia Georgia guy and everything like that. But you be patient. Stafford will throw that pick or two. So, you know, we was uh, tied with that, tied with the fumbles loss and tied with the interceptions and everything with the Rams. Very identical. Uh, the time of possession almost identical as well. Uh, twenty nine min, twenty nine minutes and thirty six seconds com- compared to thirty minutes and uh, twenty four seconds for the Rams. So you had those things going on. Okay, now I want to get into Desmond Ritter, and then I'm going to get into some comments by Coach Arthur Smith. So, Desmond Ritter, I have had conversations with. Uh, guys who are Falcon fans. I have my my best friend, one of my best friends, man. He's a Falcon fan. I have a couple of home ho- homies who are females who are Falcon fans. And, you know, yesterday I was just kind of like getting their perspective of things just as a fan and what do they see. We you know we're just having personal conversations, you know, with people kind of seeing what the emotional roller coaster was going for just regular fans like uh, you and me and everything. And uh, pretty much everyone wants Ritter. Everyone wants Ritter. I've talked to three different Falcon fans personally, you know, one-on-one conversations, asking them questions about how they feel. And, you know, pretty much just for those three and Falcons Twitter, uh, Falcons Instagram, all those things like that, I am seeing – that um, people want Ritter, man. People are tired of Mariota already. And, you know, it's just an anxious fan base, man. Atlanta Falcon fan base is an anxious fan base because, you know, you've been, let's, let's say, let's just call it for what it is. You've been underachieving for so long that, You got guys like Allen Robinson looking like he is, you know, saying like that again. And I don't think he is. But on yesterday, 
it was looking like he was, you know, I said four catches and everything like that. But this fan base is just ready to, for to win. And you get that close. You you're down 28 to 10 and then you battle all the way back just for Mariota to throw an interception on what I think was a terrible pass. Yeah, that was a terrible pass. First of all, you didn't get it to your star. You didn't get it to London or you didn't get it to Pitts. In that situation, I want London or Pitts. Pitts or London. Shoot, I'll even take Patterson if he just so happened to have been down the field like that. But my receivers are Pitts and London. So, therefore, in that situation, I got to look for one of those guys. And if someone makes a play, then just so be it. And guess what you did? Defense of the Rams. You made your, you made, you, you did your job. I can live with that. What I can't live with is an inaccurate pass from Marcus Mariota throwing it too high. And you got Jalen Ramsey, who is an athletic corner, athletic athlete, despite what people say athletic athlete and he was able to pretty much do that that play looked like what julio did to luke keekley reach right on over him and like and like, let me take that from you bye reach right on over him and took the ball right from him but the ball was too high if that was kyle pitts or drake london and he does that too i live with it i'm cool with it it's all good but it wasn't. It was Brian Edwards. It was Brian Edwards. And the pass wasn't accurate. It just wasn't. I mean, we can argue it down back and forth. You know what I'm saying? If there's any Falcon fans that feel like I'm wrong about that, please, by all means, let's talk about it. I don't mind. I have a conversation with anyone. But, hey, man, it was the pass was too high. Drake London had eight receptions for 86 yards and a touchdown averaging 10 yards, almost 11 per catch. Kendra Hodge, he had two for 57, but he's not who I'm looking for. Alameda Zacchaeus, who, you know, since scored a touchdown and honestly is a, is a natural deep threat too, because like when he gets going, People be looking for him like, you know, they don't want him to run past him because he has that ability. Kyle Pitts, two for 19. What is going on with the whole narrative of Kyle Pitts? I'm going to get to that in a second because that that's that's in my whole thing that I have about Coach Arthur Smith. But back to Ritter, because I don't want to keep jumping from subject to subject. I know how that can get really annoying and hard to follow, too, by the way. So going back to Ritter. I personally would like Ritter to come in maybe week four or five, you know, at the earliest, maybe week five. But realistically, I just feel like Coach Arthur Smith may have a longer leash with Mariota than we would like. I think Coach Arthur Smith is to the point to where he has a relationship, like I and I've said this before, a relationship with Marcus Mariota to the point that Desmond Ritter is sitting on the back bend, um, just waiting it out, you know, is mess around and probably going to end up being we being two and six or something like that, and then it's gonna be okay, Desmond Ritter time to see what we got because the season is pretty much over with. Me personally, I believe if you bring in Desmond Ritter a little sooner, maybe you win a few more games. I know it was only preseason against, you know, guys who aren't first strings, but I do feel in my heart of heart that it's a few throws that if I have Ritter throwing that ball instead of Mariota, or if I have Ritter making the decision instead of Mariota, you know, I feel like maybe we have a better opportunity, a better chance to win. And I could be wrong. We don't know what you know, Desmond Ritter is, but that's the whole point. We don't know what he is. And we know that Marcus Mariota is not the future and he's barely even the present right now. I would love to see 
what Desmond has because I already seen what Marcus has, if that makes any sense to anyone. You know, in two games, I've seen what Marcus is going to give me, you know. But they always say the third time is the charm. And you have the Seahawks coming up. The Seahawks, they looked great against Denver. Um, And then yesterday, they looked like crap against San Fran. Now, I understand that's a division opponent. Know you a little bit better. But also, you got to look at Denver. Denver barely squeaked pie to get a win yesterday. So we don't know how good Denver is going to be, but that's uh, the Broncos nation. That's their problem. But, you know, we just got to try to, like, figure out what are we going to really get from Marcus Mariota, and will he be able to give us what we want in enough time to save and salvage some of this season? If not, we need to get on point with Desmond Ritter, see what we have, and it will be great if Desmond Ritter does show that he has what it takes to be our franchise quarterback. Therefore, if he does, we don't have to worry about drafting a quarterback next year or going forward or whatever the case may be. We don't have to do that. And uh, that'll be a beautiful thing. We can start working on other things like your uh, defensive line, offensive line, getting more receivers, rev, whatever, you know, so you still so Falcon fans, I say this be patient because we know that Mariota is a stop stopgap, okay? We know that. And at times Mariota's trash. It's like I don't want to call him that, but I'm but it's like how how many week more weeks can I just be nice about it? He he plays like trash at times, but he's not a trash player because he has done good things in two games. He has. So Ritter, hopefully week five, but I want everyone to expect Ritter to maybe not even play until after the bye week. I'm going to say the latest, after the bye week. Earliest, week five. Latest, probably sometime after the bye week. Because I believe they want to give Marcus Mariota every opportunity every chance that he possibly has to lead this team and everything. But Marcus hasn't been a starter in a while, and he's still getting his feet up under him. It's like we have two rookies in a way. It's like we have two rookies. You know, one that just been holding a clipboard for a while and one who is a raw rookie. You know, so... I'm That's my, my, um, my take on that, man. I feel like Mariota... It has a few more weeks before we will see a Ritter. But I do believe that Ritter should be coming in a whole lot sooner while we can still salvage some of this season. Only because a hey, Ritter has legs too, just like Mariota. And I think that Ritter, once he gets into a rhythm from what we've seen in preseason, again, not the first strings, but instead what we've seen in preseason, that Ritter has the ability to really – you know what I'm saying? Like, be more accurate than Marcus Mary or Marcus Mariota. He has more to offer you than Marcus Mariota. That's where I'm feeling in my heart. But until we see this, of course, we will not be certain. So we'll see what happens with that. But I definitely, like I said again, he needs to be in. All right, now I want to move on to some comments about Coach Arthur Smith, you know, about, you know, Kyle Pitts and everything and about winning the game. Coach Smith basically was saying that, you know, he doesn't care how the game is won. He just wants to win the game, and this isn't fantasy football and everything like that. Okay. Now I'm going to do something I don't normally do just because, you know, I like to try to – Use different vocabulary and not be one of those guys that where he did every word that comes out of his mouth seems like it's just, you know, it's an, a swear or anything like that. But Coach uh, Smith, I have to be real with you. Uh, That's bullshit, man. Okay. That's grade A bullshit. Nobody is talking about fantasy football or anything like that. I want to win the game. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of people that have Kyle Pitts on their fantasy. And I'm one of them. 
I'm not going to lie to you, but I don't care about that. I want my tight end who was drafted fourth overall, drafted as a tight end wide receiver, hybrid type of a unicorn player to get more targets. Like he's got like two, two catches for 19 yards. He had three targets yesterday. You got two catches for 19 yards. You know, you got two catches for 19 yards for someone who is a dynamic player. What are we doing? You can't keep doing that. You can't keep doing that. That's just not the move. So it's just like, man, get this man more targets. He should have at least six targets, maybe seven targets a game. There's no excuse for that. That's your playmaker. Drake London, another playmaker. Everyone else is just kind of like stop gaps. Almost. You have some guys that's going to be there, but we're just talking about this offense, offensive weapons. You look around, you have more stop gaps than the guys who, who reassure you when they're on the field. Outside of Pitts, Patterson, and London, who else are your playmakers? Who else has already like shown that they have the ability? We're still waiting on Tyler Algiers. That was his first game. Okay. 10, uh, 10 uh, rushes for 30 yards. Three yards per carry. We got some work to do. But out of your playmakers, you should be getting the ball to one of those guys. You see, you look around the league and you see other guys getting the ball to their playmakers. Look at Tua Terrell over yesterday. How he just got the ball to his playmakers. Gusecki, who was a tight end, by the way, athletic catch. And he's not as athletic as tight as uh as Kyle Pitts. He was able to get one. Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill. Regardless, he got the ball to his playmakers. Come on. You gotta give him to the playmakers, man. I'm sorry, that's bullshit. And and I'm not going for it. Now, a lot of people may say, well, who are you? Shoot, I'm me. That's all you need to know. Chris Tip Moore. And I said it, and I meant it, and I'm going to stand on that. That's bullshit. Get the ball to your playmakers. Get them targets. At this point going forward, London and Pitt should have at least seven or eight targets per. Per. And then you still need to uh, give Cordell Patterson his love as well. And just let everyone else fall in where they fall in, man. Because we're, we, we're losing these games. We've lost by a combined total of five points in two games. Both winnable games. If you're 2-0 and and you say these things, then okay, coach, you got it. This ain't fantasy football. Win the game however we want to win. But we 2-0. I ain't got nothing to say. But guess what? We 0-2, so I have everything to say. Get the ball to your playmakers. I'm loving Drake London. I'm loving how he's shutting all the haters up. Shout out to them Saints fans who were talking about that we ain't had no receiver when we drafted Drake London. I had so many Saints fans just coming at me sideways about Drake London. So many. But the crazy thing about it is I was coming at them sideways about Olave. And all I'm saying is London is producing. That's all I'm saying. So it is what it is. But loving some Drake London, loving what he's doing. You know, it's in the, for his first two, what, 13 catches in his first two games with a touchdown. Hey, that's nice. That's nice. He keeps it up. He keeps that up and keeps that steady. I think uh, maybe the only person that may be like fighting him for that may be Jihad Dotson out of uh, Washington. So and that's just like right now to me. But like I say, get the ball to your playmakers, man. We got to get ready for Seattle coming up. And Seattle, I believe, will be a good testament of where Marcus Mariota is because Seattle is not a great football team. I feel like very winnable game, but it's all on the players, all on the quarterback, more specifically, 
to make plays, to get the ball to the playmaker. And it's like, if you can't, then we just need to get somebody in there who can. I don't want to be taking too much time, but I do know you have to be patient. So being patient, I will continue to do. But how much time Mariola gets, that should be up for discussion. Every week by week. Because right now we're 0-2. We're not winning football games for whatever reason. And Mariota is turning the ball over. Mariota is turning the ball over. First two games, he's turned the ball over. Fumbles. Now you got, now you got interceptions and stuff like that. You're giving the opposing defense, you know, opportunities to beat you. Atlanta Falcon fans are ready to win. I know some didn't come in with any expectations this year. But Falcon fans are ready to win, and I don't blame them. It is some good. It is the Falcons are on the rise. The Falcons are different, as I said in my uh, previous Falcon video about keep the faith. Yeah, keep that same faith because they are different. But I cannot ignore the fact that the Falcons technically should be two and zero right now, technically. I understand, you know, we was, we was getting blown out the water, but we almost made the Rams feel exactly what we felt in that Super Bowl with that 28-3. to That would have been great. And it's so crazy. I said, man, if there's any time for the Falcons to redeem some 28-3 to stuff, it's right here. And they almost completed the comeback. But, hey, that pass was just too high. And guess what? Picked off. For the game, that just can't happen, man. You doing too great. You had the special teams play. Troy Anderson coming through like a freight train. Boom, making the plays. But you have guys like Mariota, who, by the way, I'm just going to uh, – just a play that just came out of my – just came to me out of nowhere. Remember the play on yesterday, Mariota. He's just not as accurate. He throws the ball too high. It was another play. Drake London, Jalen Ramsey, fourth quarter with like nine minutes to go. The score is 10 to 31. London makes a move, comes back for the ball. Mariota overthrows him. Easy pass, pitch and catch. Mariota overthrows him. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I, I said that as another point to what I was saying about the pass being too high and him and, and him overthrowing pretty much Edwards right to Ramsey. Marcus has got to play better in this Seattle game. It's a must. This is a must-win game. You cannot be going – into week four, 0 oh, and three. You have to be one and two. One and two is acceptable. One and two and, and nothing else. You cannot lose this game to Seattle and be 0 oh, and three. You cannot. So with that being said, guys, um, me personally, I'm you know wrapped up in a few different things as far as sports goes um i appreciate every last one of you guys for you know checking my channel out as i'm continuously trying to grow and get better um just a little insight i am a student you know i said i'm going for my bachelor's degree in sports casting so that working um still actively you know saying play sports and everything like that i play basketball at least two three times a week so with all that and still, you know, trying to bring you guys generational sports, generational topics, everything, all I got to say is everybody's in trouble when this is all I'm doing to when this is my job and this is the thing that, that, that wakes me up every morning and all the stuff like that and to where I can just work on my body and just work on sports and everything like that. I mean, y'all... It's going to be a lot of guys in trouble because I'm not going to let up. 
I'm not going to let up. This is what I really love to do. I really love to talk about sports. I know I'm not the best at it yet, but I will be. Because that's what I want. And in this, and in this whole realm, I was told I can have whatever I want. And I feel like each and every one of you who are listening, who are subscribed, can do the same thing. I'm no better than anybody. I just really want everything that they said I could not do or cannot have. And that's what I want for the Falcons as well. Everything that they say we won't have and cannot do. So with that being said, rise up. Be generational because it's always time to be. A1 Forever Sports, Chris Tip Moore, the show that's cooler and fly too. Why settle for less where you can have more with a vision? Why settle for less if your last name is more or you can just give more? Until next time, y'all, like I said again, A1 Forever Sports, Chris Tip Moore. Falcons, let's get this W against the Seahawks now. And I'll holler. Yeah, truly, cooler and a flyer too. Damn, cooler and a flyer too.